Hey, what the hell are you up to? I ask a civil question, I deserve a civil answer. All right, that's reasonable. I'm sitting here. What the devil do you mean, you're sitting there? I make the most simple statement of the world, but it doesn't penetrate your thick skull. I said I'm sitting here. Who the hell do you think you are? I'm an Indian. All right, mister, I'm addressing you politely. I'm addressing you patiently. I'm a police officer with an assortment of problems. Muggers, dope pushers, hookers, drunks, to mention only a few. Now you bring the problem of an Indian in front of the cathedral. I don't need any more problems. I've got it up to here. You give yourself the problem, officer. Oh, no. No, man. You give me the problem, and the problem is you. Now take yourself up and out of here. No. What do you mean, no? You asked me to take myself up and out of here. I said no. I will not take myself up and out of here. Isn't that plain? Oh, that's plain. In other words, you're defying the law and disturbing the peace. Buzz off. What are you trying to do? Were you trying to get me to arrest you? Hold on, Muldoon. Hold on, you're saying, Father. Do you mind telling me what I'm supposed to hold on to? Half of him is a streaker and the other half a heathen Indian. What's going on here? What's going on is as plain as your face, Father. We got a heathen Indian in front of God's holy church. Well, the question of whether he's a heathen or not is open for discussion. Well, look at him. Well, I mean, it's not simply to be taken for granted because of the way he's dressed. I mean, he could well be a believer, just as you and I. Right on. Whether he's a believer or not is aside the point. The point is, he's sitting where he shouldn't be, and I want him up and out of here. As I see it, it's the right place. For what, you heathen savage? For whatever I desire. I think he's very well-spoken, Father, don't you? Oh, Mrs. Doyle. I think you ought to ask him what he desires, don't you, Father? That's reasonable. Just, uh, what is it you desire? God and God's grace, I suppose. Oh, that's very nice. Well, you really can't argue with that, can you, officer? Mrs. Doyle, I'd thank you to not be telling me how to run my business. If he wants God and God's grace, let him go inside the cathedral the same as everybody else. But he doesn't have a shirt on. He's got a coat and he's sitting on it. That would settle the matter, then you could go inside the cathedral. I will not go into the cathedral. This is the proper place right here. Son, this is private property. You don't want to be sitting down here with a feather in your hair, attracting a crowd, disturbing honest worshipers. This isn't private property. This is God's property. And since you don't work for God, why don't you get your big blue butt out of here and leave me alone? Muldoon, but uh, the gentleman is absolutely right. This is not uh, private property. This is God's property. The devil you say, Father. You mean to tell me you're going to let the heathen sit there? For the time being, yes. <laughs> All right, folks, come on, move it along. It's not a circus. Providing, sir, by the way, my name is O'Connor. What's yours? Clyde Lightfoot. All right, Mr. Lightfeather. Providing you can give me one good reason why I should. Because I've come here to meditate. Do you consider this a proper place for meditation? The best. The very best. Would you deny that? You do go to the heart of the matter, don't you? All right. What is meditation to you? Now, do you consider this the proper place for a theological discussion? The best. Do you deny that? All right. Granted. Then I repeat my question. What is meditation to you? Prayer. God. Being. Well, that's, that's rather general, isn't it? You want the specifics on it? 
Well, Father, I don't know how much with it you are, but I'll give it a try. I allow thought to leave my mind. Then I observe my breath rise and fall. And then I become one with my breath. You see, I went to one of your better universities and they taught me what you pale faces call logic, the art of reason. The trouble is I got hung up on it, just the way you people are hung up on it. So I sit here and I try to surrender this so-called reasonable logic of my thinking to something deeper, perhaps truer. I try to remember myself as I am and maybe to remember things I have forgotten. There's also a question of time, Father O'Connor. I sit here and I consider God's time and I consider man's time, but without thought. How can you consider without thought? Now we get into a puzzle. The problem is there are no ideas devised by the human mind that are capable of dealing with man's time, much less God's. Precisely. God is mystery, and so is his time. And the God I believe in is a, is a hidden God. Deus subsconditus. You have all the answers right out of the book. I don't mean to convey that impression. Still in all, you convey it. In the old times, my ancestors knew the secret of the great time. I'm afraid the white man has forgotten it. I suppose I've forgotten it too. My ancestors had no doubts. But I am filled with doubts. I envy you. Why? Because you're so sure of yourself. You think so? Yes. All laid out and specified. Mr. Lightfeather, are you really an Indian? Yes, sir, right down the line. I'm a full-blooded Mohawk Indian. All right, hold on, hold on, Father. I was raised a Catholic. There are certain things I don't know and certain things I know. You talk to God inside the church, not outside. Why? Provoking question, isn't it? Question is, Father, are you going to let him sit here? For the time being, yeah. Let's just say that I'm... I'll take it to a higher authority. Scout block. Yes, sir, I'm afraid he's very authentic. And what exactly is he doing in front of the cathedral? Meditating. Father O'Connor, if he desires to meditate, it seems to me he should be allowed to do so. This seems to be a matter for the police and not for us, if they object to it. Well, so you see, he's on our property. He's uh, sitting right in front of the door. Oh, well, that does present a problem. But a simple one, it seems to me. All you need do is suggest to him that we desire that he does not meditate in front of the door. Well, sir, I, uh, I indicated this to him. And he replied that uh, this is a, isn't a private property. This is, this is God's property. Well, you'll find that an engaging notion. Well, I mean, he's not doing us any harm, is he? You really carried away by the notion that this is God's property. Isn't that right, Father? Uh, he put it so naturally and directly. Huh? <laughs> well, did it ever occur to you that uh, God's property rights extend farther than this cathedral? You know he owns Wall Street, the White House, Protestant churches, even a few synagogues. Soviet Union, Red China. Not to mention a galaxy or two up there. I am afraid I uh, didn't think of it that way. What do you think of it, Father O'Connor? And uh, you might suggest to this Mohawk Indian that he find a more suitable place for meditation than the porch of our cathedral. And do it as soon as possible, please. Yes, sir. Peacefully. I'll do my best. Yeah, with no police. I understand perfectly, Your Eminence. Father? Hmm. This, uh, this Indian of yours, he sounds fascinating. Well, he's right out front, sir. If you'd like to come out with me, you could uh, see for yourself. Uh, do you mind if I ask you a personal question? Not at all. Do you meditate? Yes, I do. Not every day. And how do you think of meditation? That's a form of prayer. I listen to God. Do you think of it as a form of prayer? Do you talk to him? Do you ask him for anything? Not usually. I, on a good day, uh, sometimes I almost feel Jesus' presence. No words, no uh, requests. Just a great feeling of peace and of love. 
course, there aren't many of these days. You don't usually ask for anything. I wonder if the Indian asks for anything when he meditates. Maybe he asks for things to be different from the way they are. Maybe he doesn't ask for anything. He says he envies me. Why? Well, the way he put it, I have no doubts. Is it true? Do you have no doubts? I have doubts, yes. Very often. Sometimes I feel God has deserted me. And then I feel very empty and alone. Growing pains, Father. I'm sorry, I... <clears throat> I don't understand what you mean by that. Why don't you ask the Indian? Yes. Will you, uh, come outside? No, Father, this is a problem that concerns you. There he is. <laughs> uh, Father, I understand you have talked to the Indian. Uh, is there anything you can tell me about him? He's a Mohawk Indian. Uh, is he Catholic? I haven't asked him. Uh, can you tell me, uh, what's he doing here? He's meditating. Uh, do you intend to let him stay here? For the time being. Uh, uh, I can't get him to answer any questions. Uh, would you be able to speak with him? Well, I'm afraid that's not in the line of my duties. Uh, what is he protesting? I suggest you ask him. Uh, excuse me, Father. Uh, Mr. Lightfeather, uh, would you care to make some statement? Uh, Mr. Lightfeather, any statement that you make will be handled with complete fairness and objectivity. Now, could I persuade you to make some statement to the people in this city as to why you have chosen the steps of this cathedral as a suitable place for meditation? Also, I would like to know why you have chosen the costume that you're wearing. I imagine he's uh, chosen an Indian costume because he's an Indian. That, that seems to make sense. Father, I am past knowing what makes sense and uh, what does not make sense. You have said that the Indian is meditating. Uh, precisely, what is meditation? Well, that's a difficult question to answer. Meditation is very much akin to what we call contemplation in our church. That is, a person who meditates, like the contemplative, attempts to put himself in tune with the spirit of the universe, so to speak. Uh, you mean with God? Yes, with the Holy Spirit. It's a deep and mysterious process, and it's not easy to describe. Well, Father, uh, would you mind trying uh, for us to describe how it's done? By calming yourself, by listening, by trying to clear your mind of all thought. You, you try and relax and let go. And if you let go, you drop down into your own depths. Meditation uh, isn't something you make happen something you let happen. Uh, yes, uh, but exactly what happens? I'm not sure that I follow you. Well, again, that's a, something of a puzzle. When you drop down, you get in touch with yourself. And so with God, meditation is a, a good way to find yourself. It's a great way to find God. Uh, finding yourself. Uh, I am curious, Father, what does that mean to you? Well, again, that's hard to communicate. I might say that most of us are alienated. We're out of touch with ourselves most of the time. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Uh, well, does your church approve of meditation? Very much. It's a very deep and ancient part of our tradition. Uh, then you would say that he is sincere in what he calls his meditation? I'm afraid I can't speak for somebody else's sincerity. Yes, but you have allowed him to stay on the steps. Well, it's not a question of allowing or disallowing. We've asked him to go. He refused for the time being. Uh, it's hardly be in the spirit of the church to uh, eject it forcibly. Well, I can understand that if he were in the church. However, out here on the steps... Well, uh, it's not a simple matter of where the church begins or ends, is it? That I wouldn't know, Father. That's your problem. <laughs> so it seems, for the time being, that the cathedral will put up with Mr. Clyde Lightfeather. For myself, I find it rather discouraging that a young American Indian with an apparent good education is engaging in such tiresome antics. Thank you, and now back to the studio.
I'd rather hope that you'd be gone by now, Mr. Lightfeather. Did you hear me? Why not? Meditation is a condition of alertness, Father, not of sleep. You're very still. Inside, Father, I am still. Why are you here? I told you to meditate. But why here? At the cathedral. You're not a Catholic, are you? No. And why here? Because the vibes are good here. Well. It's a question of belief, Father. This place is filled with belief. That's why I selected it. I need belief. I need faith. I need them more desperately than you can imagine. What do you want to believe? That God is saying. Did I hear you correctly? Did you say you're here because you want to convince yourself that God is saying? You heard me. Well, I can assure you of that. God is not only saying. He's full of love and compassion. Well, how the hell do you know? Well, it's an inner experience. It's nothing I can prove. It's based on my own faith, my own belief. Not if you're a Mohawk Indian. I don't know. I've never been a Mohawk Indian. I have. I can see your point. All right, Father, spell it out. What's on your mind? Well, the trouble is that you're always putting me on the defensive, and I don't think I want to be on the defensive. I'm trying to handle this as a Christian, in a civilized manner. How long are you planning to stay? I told you, until God answers me. That could be a long time, Mr. Lightfeather. Or it could be an instant. I'm meditating on time. Time? I always think of time when I think of God. When I meditate, something happens to time. It changes. Maybe. But just maybe, I'm able to touch a moment of God's time. You know, he has his time, we have ours. They're not the same thing. I suppose not. Well, that's the whole point of it, Father. I want God to open up his time to me. Do you know what I'm saying? No, not really. Well, look at it this way. What am I doing here? I'm a Mohawk Indian, right? Yes, yes, indeed. I look up there and what do I see? Buildings, monstrosities, pieces of tin junk curdling back and forth. Smoke, filth, noise and stink. I look around me and I think of my ancestors and I weep. Do you know what it is to weep inside of you, Father? Not with tears, but with your whole body tearing itself to pieces. I think I know the feeling. And the worst part of it is I got faith laid on me. I believe in God. So do I. I'm a Mohawk Indian. And I look across the street. And instead of the giant trees that were 14 feet at the base and rose 200 feet in the sky, instead of that, and the smell of the leaves and the wet, warm scent of the June earth, what, are that, what do I see instead of that? You see a city. It's a concrete jungle. Maybe that's your thing, but it's not mine. I look over there and Con Edison is tearing up the pavement, cutting through a foot of concrete looking for the earth, but the earth is gone. They've put it to death. Well, things change. Some call it progress. That's the dirtiest word they have invented. I am grateful it doesn't exist in the Mohawk language. What doesn't exist? The word progress. We have no word for it, so we don't have to lie to ourselves. We don't have to kill the fresh air, do away with the trees, murder the animals, litter the place and pollute the sky. We don't have to dash around at 60 miles an hour in the stinking tin chariot and call it progress. You can't reverse it, you know. That's right. I can't and you can't. But what about God and God's time? I'm afraid you've gone beyond me again, and... I 
have to bring it back to the question of how long he's planning to stay here. I told you that until God answers me. I'm afraid that won't satisfy the Cardinal. All right. Let me give it the old school try, and then you can call the fuzz. How about it? Until when? Until morning. Very well, until morning. I'll do as much for you sometime. It's a light feather. May I put a rather foolish question to you? What makes you any different than anyone else, Father? How can you pray so fervently? So, so filled with doubt. That's the crux of it, isn't it? But how could we get to the sunrise if there were no nights? How could we get to the light without passing through the darkness? Think about that, my friend. About the Indian, I suppose. Yes, it is, sir. Is he still there? No, sir, he's gone. No unpleasantness, I trust? No, sir, no unpleasantness. No police? No, only myself. Good, it would be a bad business. This got out of hand. God knows we've done enough to the Indians. Don't know whether there's enough remorse or penance to make up for it. They're strange people. We understand very little. Did you ask the Indian about the question of doubt? Yes, I did, sir. I'd be interested to hear what he replied. He said that was the crux of it. Did he? Rather an extraordinary man, isn't he? I suppose he is. Well, in their own way, the Indians were very close to God. I don't want to get into that now. Just say that you handled it very well, Father. Good night. Something else? Yeah, if I may ask you a question. Go ahead. 
What is God's time? Is that the Indian's notion? Yes, it is. Did you ask the Indian what God's time is? No, I didn't. Well, then I suggest you do that if he returns. Good night, Grand Minutes. What if he doesn't return? Well, then you'll have to figure it out for yourself, Father. Like the rest of us. 